So Nemo, you had a fantastic trip. You just uh, you did F in FGM there, correct? Like uh, two months ago, or a month and a half ago, or something? A month and a half ago. A month and a half ago, and you found while you were doing the uh, ending FGM that they were spiritually hungry. Is that correct? Yes, they were. And and what what made you as what made you conclude that? Uh, as we were doing the NFGM training, when we have the community dialogue, is when the men, uh, some said we need to up our game and do more discipleship to get the men and the youth to come to the church. And they said their church was not so old, it is barely new. It is where we, we had a donation where we constructed uh, a bathroom for the women and men because they didn't have one. And so they were like, we don't know God and we would want to know more about him and just learn the word of God. And you could see the hunger because even the questions they were asking, we were there for end of GM, but we were more inclined also again, answering questions on discipleship. What happens when you have mixed your things and not following the ways of God, then what happens to you? So we got to answer that. Then we told them, let's deal with First, what brought us on ground, and then we can see how we can come back and deal with this. And that is why, for me, he said, I have to go back to hit it when it's still hot. Yeah, amen. And so you mm -hmm. rearranged your schedule totally, went back a month and a half. How did mm -hmm. it go? You just got back from that trip uh, two days ago. How did it go? Uh, the first day, uh, we had 58 people. And this initially, <laughs> initially for me, it's supposed to be a women's discipleship class, right. but somehow the, the men always end up being there and we don't turn them away. We let them stay. And the second day, again, the numbers went higher. We had 74. And on the last day, we had 150 people. 150? Uh, yeah. That's fantastic. And they came from very far villages and some we had met them in a different village so when they had there was a training in this church they actually walked for more than 15 kilometers to get to this church wow That's yeah 15 kilometers one way i assume yes one way and when we had finished there is this one lady who said the day you came to our church and you taught us about FGM, I knew there was something more about you and your team. And when I heard that you were coming to this church, I had to get myself there to listen and learn more. And because when we were the training, we started with the basics, one degree of what is it that they know about the word of God? How do have they heard the voice of God? What have they read and known about the word of God? And so we started with the illustration of the blindfold with the scarf, and following the voice of God and all that. And we could see the amazement. And then they said, but some of us have never heard the voice of God because we have mixed ourselves with the things that we do. We are one in one leg in in the church and one leg in with the witch doctors and following witchcraft. And so again, I did the illustration of the circle and the seat in the middle. Who is seated in, the, in your heart? Who is controlling you? Who are you following? And with the three circles, there is one where God is the center and then where you are the center. And then there is the selfish one where you are the center of everything and God is outside there. And they were like, I think we need what we had been doing. We have been doing it all wrong all along and we have mixed ourselves. And that is when after I had finished tra the training, we also had an altar call of the people who had not received Jesus because I said, there is no way you will carry all your burdens. You have to cast them to the Lord. And we had a moment where I told them, go get a stone. They didn't know why I had told them to go and pick a rock and come back with it. So when they came back is when I told them, put it, lift it up. And then I was like, how does it feel to keep lifting up this rock? And some were saying it's heavy. And I was like, that is how some of the conditions of our hearts, that is how they are. They are heavy because we've just decided to carry all the burdens instead of casting all our burdens to God because he has said his yoke is easy, that we need to give him all our burdens for him to carry them for us. And so is when they had the wow moment and we said, can we just bring them to the cross 
bring them to the front, to the altar, and let us leave them there. So on the last day, uh, we started talking about forgiveness and reconciliation. And that is when I just charged the men and I said, you know, you are the head of the community. And unless you stand up and point them in the right direction and become the change agents, they are bystanders of Christ and lead them in the correct way because no household will be following a uh, true way will be apart if they are for if the men are taking the leadership the role that they need to do as it is in the word because they are the head of their homes and so we had a wonderful time of reconciliation and praying and the men spoke over the blessing over the community and it was just wonderful seeing wow. all that the reconciliation the getting back together, the women crying out for the children, for the youth. It was just a beautiful end of ceremony because more often than not, we never really know how, how do we go back to God? How do we turn back to God? Because even in the book of Chronicles says, if my people who are called by my name, if they call up to me, I will heal their land. Because again, we have been, they have been talking about drought, drought, drought. And we told them, you need to change the words that you speak because words have power. Words, The words that you speak, they either bring good fruit or bad fruit. So it's up to you to know what is it that you are speaking. Even if the situation is, yes, they, it's true, there is a drought, but can we change the atmosphere because of the words that we are speaking? We can go back to God and say, yes, we know it is dry, but you are the God who provides the rain. And they will get rain because... There are things that have been spoken that are positive. And so we also charge them to be careful about the words that they are speaking. And as always, again, cat and dog theology, me, 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 me. And they, my illustration of the hands and everything. And I told them, if your hands are always like this, they are folded up. Then even when God wants to bless you, there is no space to bless you because your hands are closed up. But if your hands are open, you're praying for other people, the community and everybody around you. You are concerned about even bringing solutions to the people around you. Then even your hands are open to receive more and what God has for you. And it is not only for you and your family, but for the community in general. So those are the topics that we, we touched on for the three days. Now, uh, did they have Bibles? No, we had a few the last time that we went there and we distributed them. So no, they, you only find it's the pastor and only a few men who have the Bibles in the church. Are your, your Timothys going with you and are they teaching? Yes, and I got every one of us now before I share the main message, we always sit down and say, building foundation blocks of the message that we are going to teach so that they can learn how to stand in front of people, how to share the message and all that. And we are growing. And actually this time we had to sacrifice the, when we go for the discipleship, we go three of us. And we had this time round, we went five of us because we want all of us to learn the message so that we are able to take turns and teach differently and grow in all that and everybody can bring in their giftings and talents in it. Did you go over, uh, did you challenge them to get their own disciples? Yes, we did. And we again divide them into smaller groups where we told them that they share the word of God and be accountable to each other. And it is only by speaking and sharing, it's in the sharing that you don't keep the word to yourself. It is in the sharing that you learn more and you also get ideas from somebody else. Somebody else has a solution to a problem that you have. You have somebody who will encourage you in your work of prayer if there's discouragement and all that. If they have an issue as a community, it is one way for them to come back together and do it as a unit. That way they are able to achieve more instead of just walking alone. How many, how many uh, came front? How many people came up front and gave their lives to Christ? J1. What percentage? We had, we had about 35, 40. Wow. Out of the, out of the last day, out of the what, 150? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So a third, a third of the people. Mm -hmm. 
and the reconciliation part uh i i hope we i'll i'll send that the last video where we are all raising our hands and just the declarations are just being made and you can just hear even when they are saying the amen and all that you can feel that there was a shift in the atmosphere something just was different in the atmosphere it mm. was not the same the joy that you're experiencing in Mailwa, I mean, just incredible. You and I both know this is what Jesus meant when he said, I came to, that they might have life and have it abundantly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not homes, it's not cars, it's not abundance of things. It's the yeah. purpose and the peace mm -hmm. of seeing for you almost a whole mm -hmm. village. Yeah. Repent before God and seek him. Yeah. And that just. Yeah thrills me that you said you could feel almost a difference in yeah. the atmosphere in that building in the church after yeah. you could reconcile yes i can only imagine the number of of angels that were celebrating in heaven yeah over what happened yeah praise the lord <laughs> amen amen good yeah. job Nemo. <laughs>